Exactly. I mean, this is not the first. There are reports about um, an attack at Sohan in the northeast of the country last June that left 132 dead, according to an official toll. Local sources say 160 died. Usually, you know, they often say that sometimes the toll release is not the actual toll. Yes. There may be more people, more bodies to be found. But our thoughts and our prayers are with the people of Burkina Faso. Let's move over from Burkina Faso to Kenya, where... Several Kenyan politicians running to become governors in August general elections are facing challenges, getting final clearance to vie for the positions as they have allegedly used fake academic degrees. Accordingly, according to Kenyan laws, uh, it's required for anyone seeking to be elected as a governor or president to hold at least a university degree. But in Machakos County, which neighbors the capital Nairobi, two voters have sent a complaint to the Electoral Commission seeking to have a candidate Wabinya Ndeti disqualified on allegations that her computer science degree in the UK is fake. Now, just last week, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, revoked the clearance of comedian Walter Mongari, uh, famous by his stage name Yambane, to run for presidency, citing new information about the comedian's academic qualifications. Now, let's bring in our News uh, Central's uh, East Africa correspondent, Abdino Aden, who joins us live from Kenya. Morning, Abdina. Thanks for joining us. All right, if you can hear us, uh, this was one very morning, very big... morning, morning. Yes, good to see, good to see you this morning. It was a really huge story on uh, one of the dailies yesterday, the Daily Nation. Uh, how serious is this looking? Uh, you know, and of course, uh, seeing the fact that uh, we're barely two months to the polls. Well, indeed, a total of seven candidates now. Uh, we've also had a voter in Mombasa who yesterday uh, uh, filed a case against uh, one of the gubernatorial uh, candidates, uh, claiming that uh, he, he doesn't qualify uh, to be clear because his uh, degree certificate is in doubt. We've also had uh, uh, other, uh, you know, five previously, including the Machakos uh, governor candidate. We have Kisi. Uh, we have Meru, we have Kakamega, and uh, uh, unfortunately, the list keeps on increasing. And the IEBC um, is expected to announce in the coming few days uh, its decision on those uh, validity of the degrees and whether those candidates indeed qualify to contest as governors. All right, um, let's talk about what the law says. We know that the law in Kenya currently ensures that the candidates' qualifications are checked before elections. I mean, I, I mean, this is the law in most African countries. But what does the law in Kenya say when a candidate's credentials doesn't check out? Uh, the first thing, uh, if you might remember, the, the degree is the first qualification required for one to be cleared to serve as a governor. Uh, and uh, there were efforts also to bring a similar qualification uh, for being an MP in Kenya. One needs a degree, but it was shot down uh, by the MPs. And... Uh, that qualification was removed, which brought a huge relief to many who are seeking the seats of an MP. Now, the IABC, uh, also according to well, the Kenyan constitution, as, as part of uh, ensuring uh, one is cleared to contest, one needs to possess uh, a, gen a valid and uh, a, an accredited uh, a degree from an accredited university. We have uh, the Council for Higher Education in Kenya, therefore, that has barred many from contesting and even has brought those who were brave enough to seek the seat, put them in hot soup. Abdullah, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, all right. I, I mean, in other, in other, you know, electoral cycles, you know, that we've also seen, even outside Kenya, you know, some people might speculate that these things might be done, you know, to, you know, bring down these candidates um, and of course, you know, give another candidate, you know, a higher chance at winning. So, so are, are there some of these aspects, you know, in this situation, or is this simply just, you know, a, a case of, you know, people just not being able to, you know, provide the necess necessary credentials to contest? It might be both. Uh, we have some candidates who have uh, claimed that they are just being witch hunted for belonging to another part of the political divide, but we've seen it affecting um, candidates, um, including uh, from both sides, the deputy president-led Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance and uh, the former prime minister, Raila Odinga-led um, Azimio uh, coalition. Therefore, uh, we have the Nairobi gubernatorial candidate, Johnson Sakaja. He says those are totally political uh, 
witch hunt, and he says that uh, he believes his degree from Uganda is genuine. Of course, uh, it's not only the governors. We've had MPs uh, because the secondary education is the, is the minimum qualification to contest as an MP, but we've seen voters come forward um, raising uh, uh, claims against uh, the validity of those certificates processed by some of the MPs. And some of these cases have been dragging on for the last few years, and the MPs are actually finishing their term. Therefore, it is both sides. It might be genuine and it might be political witch hunt. All right. Just before you go, I want to ask, you know, should it take, you know, th such a long process to verify these certificates? You know, if, if they, if the candidates present them as authentic and the persons have said that they are not, how long should it take, you know, to clarify? Well, uh, we have uh, the universities, uh, they have a lot of process, even though uh, the IEPC has, says, uh, has said that, uh, um, the buck stops at it. We have the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, which deals with the integrity issues and uh, uh, confirming whether the candidates uh, pass the integrity test or meet those qualifications. But at the same time, it has been tricky for the IEBC to, to, to confirm the validity of the certificate. So it has been relying on, on, uh, on the available evidence presented to it by both the candidates and uh, those ones presented uh, by those, uh, you know, um, petitioners in the courts, because we have the attendance list, the graduation list, we have the transcripts, the certificates. So it has been challenging. And so far, one of the most affected include uh, presidential candidate Walter Nyambane and uh, Mombasa governor uh, candidate uh, Mike Mbuvi Sonko. So I think we expect to find a decision because I've been following up on the case keenly and closely and we'll know the fate of these governors in the coming few days. All right, thank you very much, Abdino. And then, of course, we would love to have you again. We certainly will have you join us as we follow updates on that story. Do enjoy the rest of your thank day. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the program. All right. Thank you.